G'day Cobbers, welcome back to the bush. Actually, my backyard today. And in this video, we'll be checking out the Travel Buddy 12 volt oven. We'll be checking out current draw, the timer accuracy, the thermostat accuracy, and preheat times. So, first up, let's have a look at how much current she draws. As you can see on the right hand side, the timer is just turned to the on position. And on the left hand side, we got the thermostat cranked right up. That wire heading in at the bottom of the door there, that's just a thermostat to tell us the temperatures inside. Now my cabo box here isn't fully charged, but it's drawing about 7.9 amps or 11.6 volts. I might have to plug that in again, back on the charger. First up, let's have a look at the accuracy of the thermostat in the unit itself. Now you'll see the graph on the screen. And when it was set to an indicated 75 degrees Celsius, it turned off at 109.8 and turn back on at 65.7 that gave us an average of 87.8 degrees celsius so at this point we were 17 and a half percent up on where we were supposed to be now at 130 degrees celsius it turned off at 132.6 and turned back on at 97.8 so average of 115.2 so we're down 11 and a half percent on where it was supposed to be. 150 degree setting, it turned off at 168.4 and then turned back on at 131.7. Now, interestingly, at the 200 degree setting, so that's almost flat out, didn't matter how long I left it going, I left it going for one and three quarter hours, the maximum it reached was 196.4, so just shy of the 200 mark. Overall, not too bad for a mechanical thermostat. So when it comes to the timer, how accurate is a timer? Again, let's check out the graph. So at 120 minutes, it actually was very accurate at 121 minutes measured. At 90 minutes, again, 88 minutes. At 60 minutes, it ran for 55 minutes. At 30 minutes, it ran for oh, about 25 minutes. And at 30 minutes, it ran for about 25 minutes. So as far as a mechanical timer is concerned, that's phenomenal performance. So that tells me that it's quality components used in the oven. So before we do some actual cooking on it, of course you have to preheat the oven. So let's have a look how long that'll take you. Now with no tray, to get to 75 degrees, it'll take 17 minutes, 130, 38 minutes, 150, 50 minutes, and for a normal preheat is 84 minutes. And that's the best part of an hour and a half to preheat the thing up to temperature, which does take a while. And 200 degrees, well, didn't quite get there with our tray in there and reached a maximum of 186.3. So the cool down starting at 180 degrees took us 10 minutes to get down to 150 degrees, a further six minutes to get down to 130 degrees, and finally to get down to 75 degrees, an extra 31 minutes. And that might be attributed to the front panel, which isn't heat insulated. But what about if you put a crumb catching tray in the bottom, the commonly available stainless steel models? Does that affect your preheat times? Let's have a look at the graph for that. With the tray in to get to 75 degrees took us 18 minutes, to 130 degrees took us 38 minutes, 150 degrees took us 49 minutes, to 180 degrees took us 74 minutes. So it actually took 10 minutes off the time to get to 180 degrees. And that could be because we're heating up the metal in there as opposed to air, which is a bad conductor of heat. And to get to 200 degrees, just like before, it didn't quite reach it. Actually got to 199.3, but didn't quite reach the full 200 degree mark after two hours. Now, when it comes to cooling down, from 180 degrees, it took us nine minutes to get down to 150, took us a further eight minutes to get down to 130, and took us 34 minutes to get down to 75 degrees. So now we know it's going to take a good hour and a half to get up to temperature. But what about cooking some pies? Well, we've preheated this one. Let's throw in some pies and find out. Righto, so I've gone to the supermarket and grabbed some stock standard 4 and 20 pies. They're frozen still. And we're going to bung them in to our preheated oven. Give them the best chance we can. We'll put them up on the top rack. The packet tells us three quarters of an hour for frozen pies till they're fully cooked. So we'll come back in three quarters of an hour and check how they're going. 
Okay, so it's been about three quarters of an hour now, so we'll put the thermocouple inside one of the pies and we'll check the temperature. We should be shooting for an internal temperature of about 75 degrees. Nice and crispy. We'll let that settle and we'll check out the temperature. So now, as you can see, after three quarters of an hour, we've only reached an internal temperature of 42 degrees, so they're not even hot yet. So we'll give it another hour and see how we go. Okay, so we've been running for about one and three quarter hours now, so we'll check out the temperature. Certainly starting to smell good, I can tell you that much. And we'll let that settle. Now with an internal temperature of over 90 degrees, I think that's classed as piping hot. Where's my sauce? Okay, so I picked up some dead horse. Cheers. Righto, so what do we think in the end? Well, it certainly heated up those pies okay, though it did take over twice as long to get them up to piping hot. Now, as far as the unit's concerned, it comes with a cigarette plug, and I've changed that out for an Anderson. It's really the only reliable connection. I tried the cigarette plug, and it depends on the vehicle's wiring. Uh, it certainly gets warm, warmer than I'm comfortable with, so I swapped it out for a 50 amp Anderson. Unit itself, stainless steel, and it's great inside and out. A couple of sharp corners, probably could have been addressed here in manufacturing. And there is, of course, the Road Chief, I believe it's called, the import competitor. Comes with a different latch. Though I've heard reports that the latch can actually come undone with corrugations, that hasn't been an experience of mine. Okay, another thing to have a look at is the bracketing. Now, the manufacturer includes a couple of brackets to bolt it down to a surface. Now, unfortunately, you can't bolt it up to a surface as many people would like in canopy installations, for instance, and I believe the aftermarket might have a solution for this, and the competitor, the import, the road chef, or chief, I believe it's called, also addresses this. So something down the track that Travel Buddy might like to have a look at. So in conclusion, I think as long as you don't expect the same performance from your Travel Buddy that you would a conventional oven mounted in your home, and pretty much double out your cooking times, it's a worthwhile investment. I mean, your car smells like a bakery at lunchtime, and that's fantastic. So there's a big old thumbs up for me. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down, twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Now, the packet tells us three quarters of an hour for frozen pies. <laughs> Here goes the packaging.